if you are convinced about game mode of computer assisted instruction, then it comes to design such a game. As an educationist, you can design, write storyboards of several games and hand over to their production team who can develop, design many games for learners. Those can be for children, those can be for higher education students also. But for this, we need to discuss various factors of a particular game. Let's see. There are many factors which are essential for a package to be considered as a game mode of CI. There are goals, rules, an element of competition, an element of challenge. There can be fantasy. There should be an element of safety, necessarily entertainment. There should be players in a game, some equipment. There can be directions. There are constraints in a game, there are penalties and there are choices. Let's see these factors. Goals. This particular screenshot of a game says learn new words while having fun. So the goal is very clear that the learner will learn new words if the learner plays this game. So. Something that you need to achieve over a time period are defined. These things are defined by a goal. So every game has a goal to be achieved. These goals provide a learner a sense of direction. These goals help in setting up challenges that the players face. So while designing, we must keep in mind that goals of the game should be decided first. Once the learner knows the goals, then the learner should be told about the rules of the game. The screenshot shows instruction there. So describe what actions are allowed within a game. Describe all limitations which are compulsory in these games, what they can do and what they cannot do. These rules also help in making a game interesting, challenging and fair for multiple players. So whenever there are multiple players, these rules decide roles of all learners. These rules need to be stated very clearly in the beginning of the game. Though the term competition is felt as relatively a negative term in the field of education, competition in game mode helps learner acquire new skills. Sometimes the learner may be competing with the computer, sometimes with imaginary characters and sometimes even computer can give chance for 2-3 players, 2-3 learners to play in the same environment. So the learner is playing against his or her own peers. Sometimes there is competition against the time. You can see the screenshot where there are 4 players. Three of the players are imaginary players created by the computer and the learner has to play against these players. Sometimes there is time factor and if within given time learner doesn't acquire skills and find solutions then the learner fails. So gradually learners learn to complete the task within the given time frame. Do you know why learners get motivated in the game mode? Because there is a challenge. Learners love challenges and challenges make the game enjoyable. See this game. Here there should be some movements and the character should get that food. So it's a challenge and it's in between interfering shapes go on increasing go on changing their nature and every time in every frame it's a challenge to the learner to reach to that particular food item. So the game becomes enjoyable, learner go on facing higher and higher level of challenges to win the game and also these challenges help the learner to achieve ultimate goal. 
So challenge is a very important factor of going game mode. Even though there is an element of competition, an element of challenge, children love games because the environment is interesting. If game mode is to be used typically for children, then how is about fantasy? Here you can see that there are colorful fish and one of the fish needs to be controlled by the learner. There are again some math problems. But because of this very interesting colorful fantasy environment, learners love to play the game. So fantasy can be added in order to grab the learner's attention, to sustain learner's attention. These learners can interact in situations that are not part of their real life. In their real life, they don't see fairies. They don't see such colorful fish and roaming around with them. So they get engaged, they get motivated and they can play different kinds of games in different kinds of fantasy environments. Safety is an important factor in a game. Why do we put learners in a game situation? Maybe because if they do the same thing in reality, they may encounter some dangerous situations. For example, you cannot put a learner on volcano land. But in games, they can reach up to the volcano. They can reach up to a particular planet. They can go closer to the sun. And they can also do surgery as shown in this screenshot. So games provide a safe way of participating in a dangerous reality. This safety factor encourages learners to create alternate situations without fear of losing a game. Even if they do something wrong, they can see the effect in virtual environment. They can see blast, they can see losing something, but they know that this is not reality. So they go on thinking creatively, they go on exploring and they go on thinking about new innovations. Taking chances or risk become easier here because they are knowing that they are safe. Entertainment is a key factor of any game. If the game is entertaining, then the learners will be motivated. If you go on providing only various questions, say vocabulary recognition or maths problems, and if there are 50, 60 problems, the learners will lose interest. But if the same problems are presented in an entertaining manner, then the learners are hooked to the game. They are provided with variety and they go on playing. You can see this screenshot, such an entertaining environment where learners learn maths, learners learn word problems. So entertainment keeps the learner emotionally involved with the game. Players is a key factor in any game. Learners themselves are players. There are some characters and while playing game, the learners enter into the role of those characters. How many players are to be allowed for playing a particular game is a crucial decision. Sometimes there are one player games. Those are solitary games. Sometimes there are some more imaginary players such as space aliens, magicians, other contestants which are just imaginary, but children love to play with these imaginary players. Sometimes in some games, there can be two, three peers, two, three learners at the same time playing a game. And there can be competition of two learners in the same game environment. So these decisions are important in any designing of a game. We can also attach some equipment in the playing environment. For example, sometimes you must have seen children playing with joysticks, playing with paddles. So it's a decision of the designer where only mouse or touch screen or an equipment is useful for playing that game. Use of only the standard equipment such as mouse or keyboard makes the game easier. 
for the learner and also for the designer. Some spatial equipments also need to be fully explained to the learner along with some manuals and instructions or some rules can be given to play with this equipment. The learner should not get stuck only because the learner cannot use this equipment. Directions are essential in any game. How to set up a game? How to start a game? What is the procedure? How to play? And what to do when the game is over or one level is over? All those directions need to be clearly given. See this screenshot. If a learner is clicking on another room, the doctor is telling, no, this is not the room where you could do a heart surgery. So learner is directed to click on the right door. Even learners need directions on how to use equipment. Sometimes learners are told to enter their name, that is the upper screenshot. Even you can decide your difficulty level. You can see this balloon pop mat. At the left hand, there are levels defined. So, from one level to the other level, learner can choose and rise. Even you can enter the number of players sometimes. Or you can look out for some help information. So, all these directions must be well written by the designer. Constraint is an important factor in any game. If we po don't put restrictions, if we don't put boundaries, limitations, then learners will not be given challenge. These constraints are actually challenges for the learner. So, some actions may be completely disallowed. There may be some restrictions. There may be some time limitations, player limitations. Or there can be some components up to this weight we cannot increase, up to this level of temperature we cannot increase temperature. So there are certain limitations and by overcoming these constraints or by solving problems, coming out with solutions within the given constraints, the learner needs to achieve goals. So this is a frame where the learner is told time up. So it usually deals with the time allowed and the number of tries to play. So either the learner is told that the time's up or the learner is told that your tries are over. And then learner gradually learns to play and achieve goal within the given time limit. So these constraints actually help learners acquire skill, acquire accuracy, acquire speed. Whenever there are challenges, there are penalties. If the learner goes wrong, the learner comes across a penalty and that motivates learner to play accurately. So, penalties need to be introduced in the beginning of the game. It should not happen that the learner has played the game and suddenly the learner comes across a penalty. That is very demotivating. In some games, penalties are kept hidden, but those are in the form of benefit to the opponent learner. So gradually learner understands that if I don't play properly, there is my opponent who will win. In case, if a learner breaks the rule, then penalty can be given. So the learner suffers a loss and that itself is a penalty for the learner. In this screenshot, the result shows that I am not topper, I am the second ranker. There are other learners, other players who have topped, who have ranked more than me and that itself works as a penalty. Sometimes a major loss can be a penalty. For example, if you are creating a simulated city and if you don't pay attention to railway line, then the entire railway line goes on damaging. Sometimes if you don't install police station, then there are many riots in your city and then there is news in the newspaper which is flashed on your screen that there are many riots in your city. There may be poverty, low literacy and then you realize that oh you need to establish a school in your city. So these penalties, these losses help you to take wise decisions while playing. Game mode is a learner controlled mode. Before playing, before starting, the learner is generally given with many choices. So the player is allowed to make choices. These choices are generally about selecting the computer as the opponent, 
whether the learner wants to play against computer, how many opponents does a learner want or there may be a level which has to be decided by the learner, choice of time also can be given. So learner can himself or herself decide in which environment, under which constraints, under which circumstances the learner loves, would love to play. Gradually learner can go on increasing constraints so that he or she gets more and more challenges. These challenges are here set by learners themselves. So, we have seen that there are so many factors in games. Many of these factors appear negative such as competition, challenges, penalties. But to keep learner motivated to learn, these factors are very important and learners themselves love these factors. If there is no challenge, if the entire game is very easy, then learners won't play that game again. And we want learners to play more and more so that there are more and more problems presented and the learner practices many contents, acquires many skills while playing. Thank you.